prove that if phi from G2K is an onto homomorphism, then K is isomorphic to G mod the kernel of phi. So what is the kernel of phi? Well, it's the set of all elements in G such that phi takes little g and sends it to the identity element in k. So it's all the g's that phi maps to the identity element. Okay, so to prove this, we have to come up with a homomorphism that is one-to-one -one and onto. And then we're done, right? Because we've come up with an isomorphism. So first we have to come up with something. For notation, so I don't have to keep writing cur phi, uh, set h equal to the kernel of phi. And now we're going to define our function. So define psi, and we'll go from g mod h, so g mod the kernel, into k by, well, psi takes a right coset, which we'll call hx, and sends it to phi of x. So we actually have to show four things. We have to show one, that phi is well defined, two, it's a homomorphism, three, it's one to one, and four, it's on two. We don't necessarily have to do them in that order, but we certainly should show that it's well defined first. So one, claim psi is well defined. What does that mean? It asked if we have two cosets, hx and hy, and they're the same, then we should have the same result. We should have that phi of x is equal to phi of y. That's what we have to show. So let's show that. Let me use a different color. So suppose hx is equal to hy. So this means that x, y inverse is in h. That's what it means for hx to be equal to hy. Right? That's exactly what it means. Now h is special. h is the kernel of phi. So maybe let's look at phi of this element and see what happens. So then phi of x, y inverse well, this is equal to the identity element in K because X, Y inverse is in the kernel. Remember, H is the kernel of phi, which is the set of all G's in G such that phi of G is equal to the identity element in K. So if this element is in H, then phi of this element is the identity element in K. We can rewrite the left-hand side of this, so phi of x, phi of y inverse. We can do that because phi is a group homomorphism. And then we can rewrite this as follows, phi of x equal to multiplying both sides on the right by phi of y. We get phi of x equals phi of y. And we started with hx equal to hy, and we showed that phi of x is equal to phi of y. So we're done here. So psi is well-defined. Well-defined. Let's go ahead and show that it's a group homomorphism. That should be pretty easy. So two, let me go back to my original color. So for any, for any two right cosets, let's say hx and hy, in the quotient group g mod h. Let's look at psi of hx times hy. Well, this is just psi of hxy. That's how you multiply cosets. And this is phi of xy. But phi is a group homomorphism, so this is phi of x, phi of y. Phi of x is psi of hx. And phi of y is psi 
of hy. So we showed that for any two cosets, psi of hx times hy is equal to psi of hx times psi of hy. So psi is a group homomorphism, homomorphism. Two down, two to go. We still have to show it's onto and that it's one to one. Let's go ahead and show it's onto. So suppose we have some K and capital K. And since you can't see it anymore, let me go ahead and write down Psi again. So Psi took G mod H into K and it was defined as Psi of HX equals Phi of X. So we took some K in capital K and we have to produce a coset that Psi takes back to K. So suppose K is in K. Now since Phi is onto, there exists some X in G Keep in mind, in all of this, phi went from G to K. So it's onto, K is in capital K, and so there is some little x in G such that phi of little x is equal to K. So then psi of the coset HX, well, by definition of psi, that's just phi of X, and so that's equal to k. So this shows that psi is onto. It's so easy to mess up the words psi and phi. I hope when I'm done with this video and I and I listen to it before uploading it, I, I didn't mess up. Uh, so easy to mess up. Four. Uh, we have to show it's one to one. So suppose psi of hx is equal to psi of hy for some right cosets hx hy in the quotient group g mod h. Well this means so then this means that psi of x is equal to sorry phi of x is equal to phi of y. Now, we don't know anything about, uh, you know, whether uh, phi is one-to-one. -one. We just know it's onto. So we need to do something else here. One thing you can do is rewrite this. So then, this is actually phi of x, phi of y, inverse, right? Just multiplying on the right by phi of y, uh, inverse. And this is equal to the identity element in K. Now, phi is a group homomorphism, so we can rewrite this. So this becomes phi of x y inverse equal to the identity element in K. So this means that x y inverse is in the kernel of phi, which is h. Right? We said that the kernel of phi is h. So x y inverse is in h. That's precisely what it means for the right cosets hx and hy to be the same. So we started with psi of hx equal to psi of hy, and we showed that hx is equal to hy. So this shows that psi is 1 to 1. So we've shown that, let's go back up, we showed that psi was well-defined, took care of that. We showed that psi was a, in fact a group homomorphism, we showed that psi was onto, so we did that right here, and we showed that psi was one to one. So we've basically shown that psi is an isomorphism. So therefore, psi from G mod H to K is an isomorphism. Hence, G mod H is isomorphic to K. Well, H, we said that was the kernel of phi. 
So g mod the kernel of phi is isomorphic to k. And that is the first isomorphism theorem. Let me put it in a box from, you know, abstract algebra. So I hope I hope this helps.